thank you for joining me or joining me again if you did see our first Who's Poo episode. If you've not seen it yet, make sure you check it out on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel as well. So if you didn't say, my name is Nikki. Thank you for joining us this afternoon on this very, very rainy day. So today we're going to talk about poo again, which is one of my favourite subjects. So I'm just going to give it a few seconds just to see if anyone else is joining us. We do have a few people in the chat already. If you didn't see our first video, uh, so it's a guessing game, so you have to comment your answers in the comments below. So make sure you put all your answers in there. Um, and also, if you do have any questions for me, just pop the questions in there and I'll try and get to as many as I can. Um, Finley and Frankie have joined us for our game. Amazing. Uh... Edward, hi Edward. Apparently he loves poo, which is great because I love poo as well. <laughs> We've got a few more people. Hi Jane, Francesca. Savannah, hi. Zach is ready and waiting. That's brilliant, we're all ready to play. Jessica and Abigail, hi. <laughs> Julie and Debbie, Sally, hi. Ollie. <laughs> Hi, Jacob and Ella. Hi. Wow, we've got lots of people joining us. So we'll get straight into it then and look at our first poo. So this time I've got a poo clue for you. So you guys check out this poo clue. Our first poo takes us to the continent of South America and more specifically, the Amazon rainforest. Underneath this lush canopy is home to millions of different species of plants and animals. However, our animal will not be found in the trees, but in the Amazon River. So there was our first poo clue. Has anyone got any idea where our first poo comes from yet? What animal we'd find in that lovely, lovely habitat? Hi Oscar. Everyone's telling me the poo facts they've learned in the past week. I'm loving it, that's great. <laughs> okay, so here is our first poo. So you've had our first poo clue, and here is our poo. Has anyone got any idea where this very, very stinky poo comes from? <laughs> what animal could it be? Ooh. Peter Fox, you've got it right, well done. Ooh, a, lot, a lot of people saying crocodile. It's not crocodile, but it's, it's, it's close because it lives in the water. <laughs> uh, Nicola, well done, you've got it right. No, it's not an alligator either. <laughs> people saying crocodile, no, alligator, no. <laughs> See if I can show you a bit, because it's a very, very weird poo. No, it's not bear poo. <laughs> bear poo doesn't very different. Sonia Perry, well done, you've got it right. Hi, Sebastian. Ask for a shout out. <laughs> Rachel, you've got it right. Karen, you've got it right. Oh, Jenny, yeah, well done. A few people have got it, well done. Very, very impressed. So this is our giant otter poo. So it is a little bit stinky. It doesn't smell really, really bad. Um, not as bad as the tiger poo from last week, um, but it does have a quite a strong smell to it. Um, and if you can see quite closely, it's kind of just um, pooey scales. It's basically what they poo out. All they eat is fish um, here at the park. In the wild, they will eat some crustaceans and even take down a uh, caiman and crocodile as well as a family. Uh, but here we're just feeding lots of different fish, so they poo just basically lots of smelly scales out, um, which then stick to me in my uniform <laughs> and make me smell really bad. <laughs> Has anyone got any questions about our otters or our otter poo? Yeah, Harriet Welgen, yeah, it is an otter. Right, guys, so otter poo, well, not otter poo, well, otter poo is really interesting, all poo is really interesting. Um, but the reason I'm going to talk about our otter poo is because they use this 
to mark their territories. So they're really sweet and otters live, giant otters live in big families, so big mum and dad and other little babies and they'll create a little den for themselves and outside that den they will poo and that's to tell all the other otters in the area that that's their home and to stay away from them. So they'll mark their territories with their poo so it smells of them. And otters do what we call the otter dance or the poo dance. So a river otter does this when it poos, which is super cute. The cutest thing ever. So it'll poo and it'll wipe its poo around with all its tail, doing its little otter dance, marking its territory. So that is a very, very cute little river otter. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> but our giant otters do a slightly different dance. They dance like this. So they'll have a poo and then he'll wipe it around everywhere. He'll do the otter dance. So kids, if you're watching, I want to see everyone's otter dance. It's the best dance ever. Big otter dance. So he'll do that to smear his poo everywhere, all over his house, make sure that all the other otters in the area know that that's his house and it smells of him. So that's why poo is really important for our otters because they use it to mark their territory. So without it, they wouldn't be able to do that. And lots of other animals mark their territory with their poo as well. I'm sure your dog's at home, if you've got a dog at home, you take it for a walk, it wheezes on every tree it sees, that's mark its territory. But lots of animals do it with their poo. Another one is a hippo. So hippos mark their territory with their poo in a really gross but very funny way. This is how hippos mark their territory. So they'll have a poo and then they will... Oh, <laughs> bit of an with it. No, oh no, it's the video not working. But basically they'll have a poo and then they'll make sure they'll whack their tails side to side, flicking their poo as far as they can. Which is very gross but very, very clever. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So that's how hippos mark their territory with their poo. <laughs> Great. And then a lot of people asked me last week what my favourite poo was, and I said wombat poo is my favourite poo because it's cube shaped. It's the only animal in the world that has cube shaped poo. Um, and we don't actually know, no researchers know why they have cube shaped poo. One theory is so it can mark its territory with its poo and the poo doesn't roll away which is really cool. So we think that might be one of the reasons why they have square poo, which is pretty cool. Okay, what do people think about our otter poo? How big the giant otters grow? Um, about six foot, a male uh, will get you, fully grown male. Um, Orimar, our male, he's gotten really big over the past few months. He's, he's very big and chunky now, which is lovely. Everyone's laughing at the hippo poo. <laughs> it is very funny. My dad poos like that. <laughs> lovely Christopher, <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> Oh, you guys are so funny. <laughs> Lots of poo, yeah. Oh, happy birthday for tomorrow, Poppy. <laughs> That's amazing. That's funny. Everyone's just, just telling me poo. Lots of poo. <laughs> Lots of laughing as well, which is great. It means you're enjoying it. If you are enjoying guys make sure you like us and follow us on our facebook page and if you want to support us by sending any facebook stars in the comments that would really be appreciated as well <laughs> oh sorry guys it's going really fast <laughs> i can't keep up the comments <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> hi spencer and phoebe hi enjoying it that's great uh, Ruby loves the hippo pooing. <laughs> Everyone loves the hippo pooing. Okay, guys, so we'll move on to our next poo. So, are you ready for our second poo clue? Our second poo takes us to the amazing continent of Africa. And more specifically, Africa's famous open savannas. Here you'll find some of the world's largest animals, such as elephants, giraffes, and even our next animal. Okay, so there was our second poo clue. Are you ready to see our second poo? Hi Maisie, she said she's really loving this. That's good, good to hear. Rosie says she loves poo. I love poo as well. All right guys, here is our second Poo. Now this one does smell very weird. I wish I could explain how it smells. 
it's not great, <laughs> but still not as bad as the tiger. <laughs> so any idea? Oh, it's not giraffe. Good try. It's not lion. A lot of people saying lion. No, not lion. <laughs> oh, Katie, Evie, and Harvey. Well done, you got it right. Oh, it's not wallaby. I see where you're coming from, though. It kind of looks a bit like wallaby. But it's not wallaby. Oh, Sonia, well done, you've got it right. Oh, quite a few people saying rhino. No, rhino poo's a lot bigger. You have to go back and watch our first episode. You'll see rhino poo there. Huge. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a zebra, it's not an antelope. Oh, people find this one hard. This is a very hard one. I'm just going to wait for one more person to see if we can get it right, and then I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> Lots of rhinos and zebras, no. <laughs> this is my clue poo, my poo clue not good enough. <laughs> Cameron, well done, you did get it right. This is an ostrich poo, which is very, very strange. And I see why a lot of people were struggling to get it right, because this is not what bird poo usually looks like. So all of the birds in the world, except ostriches and emus, poo and we together. So they all, all birds only have one exit and it all comes out the same exit. And the same with ostrich, they only have the one exit, but they poo and we separately. So they'll we or poo, where all the other birds will just we and poo together. So um, a bird poo would usually look kind of like this. This is what we usually see, the white, brown, really liquidy stuff is usually what bird poo looks like and I'm sure um, you guys have tried to wash it off your car before I always try to wash it off my car and it usually looks like this which is really really gross and it's really hard to get off our cars because when it dries it dries like cement it's really really tough but that is really good for birds because a lot of birds like this very very cute humbot penguin will make their nests out of it they will use their poo to build a nest for their eggs and for their chicks. So without that poo, then it'll be really hard for them to make a nest for their eggs and their chicks. So it's really important for them. So what we call penguin poo or bird, seabird poo, we call it guano. And guano is actually something that humans like to use as fertilizer. So one of the problems that birds like penguins face is that people will go into their habitat and take their, their poo away from them. They'll dig all of the ground up to get that guano out. And then this disturbs the penguins in their nests. And even if a penguin does have a chick or an egg in there, if it's been disturbed, sometimes that penguin, that mum and dad won't go back to it. And then that chicken or that egg won't survive because humans have disturbed it. So guano, peng penguin poo, seabird poo is really important for them so they can build their nests. But we like to say that it's fertilizer as well. So it's one of the threats that our poor Humboldt penguins face just because of their poo, because humans want it just as much as they do. See, poo's really important. Um, <laughs> but, what was the next one? I can't remember. So, back to poo. So you'll see in this one, there is little white bits in it. And the white bit, if you ever see bird poo, next time you go outside, you see some bird poo, have a good inspection. The white bit is actually the bird's wee. And then the brown bit in the middle is their poo. They just all come out at the same time. And you see on this poo that there is little white bits in it. And that's just from a bit of wee that was left over inside, which is a bit gross. But that's what we do on this program. We're really, really gross. <laughs> and I've got one more cool bird fact. Just because I found this fact out the other day and thought it was brilliant. There's a little bird called a, <laughs> a double banded. Oh, no, we've gone wrong. Sorry, guys, technical faults today are just terrible. <laughs> this little bird is called a double banded corsa. And it lays one egg. Each time it lays an egg, it only lays one egg. And it's sitting on it at the moment. But what it does, it lays that egg around antelope poo because the antelope poo looks exactly the same as its egg. So nothing will come and eat its egg because they'll think it's antelope poo, which is really, really clever for that bird to do. So it'll hide its egg amongst poo. So without that antelope poo, those birds probably wouldn't survive or there wouldn't be as many of them. So thanks to the antelope poo as well. But anyway, 
Much more otter food. Well done, you guys got it right. It is ostrich, the only bird, well, ostrich and emus, the only birds in the world that poo and wee separately, like we do. Very cool. All right, I'm just going to catch up on some comments. Ah, <laughs> just going for Everyone's saying, wow, they're cool facts. They are very good facts. <laughs> See? Who is very interesting? People don't believe me. <laughs> oh, everyone, everyone's saying the otter was very cute. The otter dance is very, very cute. Hi, Eddie and Harry. No, sorry, Eddie and Hattie. <laughs> this is amazing, thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, Adele, I'm glad you found it a bit interesting. <laughs> Oh, Charlie says hello to everyone at Yorkshire Wildlife Park. Oh, thank you very much. I'll tell them all you said hi. All of us find this very funny. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Shout out to Robert. Hi, Robert. <laughs> right, we'll go on to our next so check out our third and final poo clue. Our third and final poo takes us back to South America, but this time we find our animal in wetlands, such as swamps and marshes, spending its days grazing on grasses and wallowing in the muddy waters. Okay, our final clue. Has anyone got any guesses what that might be? What animal that might be that lives in that very wet habitat? What is the biggest poo? Oh, probably elephant or rhino would be pretty close. Steve said he's loving this, it's great. I'm glad you're loving it. Uh, Lucy said she's missing Yorkshire Wildlife Park. We're all missing you too. Okay, Ooh, this one's very heavy, it's got some weight in it. <laughs> this is our third poo. Have a good look, what could this be? So you've got our clue from the video and you've got our poo. What animal could this be from? Hi Annabelle and Alice. <laughs> it's not the hippo poo, no, <laughs> good try. <laughs> Uh, nerds or hippo poop. <laughs> I think everyone just wants to watch the hippo video over and over again. <laughs> oh no, it's not a hog or a pig. Good try. Oh, but it's very close though, very close. It's not an alligator. It's not a crocodile. Good try, Ella. Ella. Ooh. Jane, you got it right, well done. Very impressed. Amy, you got it right, well done. It is your favorite animal. It's not crocodile. Anaconda, it's not an anaconda. Hi, Arthur. Ooh, Leanne, thank you for the 49 stars. Thank you so much. That's really appreciated. Oh, Connor, well done. Grace, yes, well done. So a few people are getting it right. Well done. It is a capybara. So this is our capybara poo. We've got two lovely girls here at the park, and this is their poo. Um, this one doesn't really smell too bad. So usually uh, little herbivores like our capybaras, their poo doesn't smell too bad because they just eat... Uh, lots of grasses and lots of vegetation, so nothing too bad in there, um, like our otters that really smell really bad. So capybaras are really interesting and really, really gross, because what they do, they create two different kinds of poo. One poo is a very wet, kind of green poo, which has loads of nutrition in it still, so they can come back and eat it again later. That's what they do. And then their second poo is like this. The usual brown poo that there's not much nutrients left in it that they won't eat again. So capybaras eat their own poo, <laughs> which is gross. <laughs> so 
Uh, it's part of their healthy diet. They do this for a really important reason, and that is because they eat so much grass. That's mainly all they all eat, especially in the wild, just lots of different types of grasses. So they'll eat all those grasses, and it's very hard to break down grass in your stomach. And so they need the bacteria to break it down. So they'll eat the bacteria that's in their poo to go into their gut to help to break down that bacteria. And also, because grass is so hard and fibrous to break down, they'll eat it once, and then basically when it comes out in their poo, they're eating it again to digest it a second time to make sure they get all those nutrients out of it. So it's actually a really clever thing that they do so they can get as many nutrients out of grass as they can because grass actually doesn't have that many nutrients in it. So it's really good that they can get all those nutrients that they need um, out of it. And it's not just capybaras that do this. I have been stopped by a number of our visitors here at the park asking why their rabbits eat their poo. And it's the same thing. They will, they will have two different types of poo. They'll have one poo that is still very nutri nutritious that they'll eat to try and digest it again. And then they'll have another poo, like this one, that they won't eat. So it's just them breaking down their food and making sure they have all that healthy bacteria in their gut to digest uh, the harsh foods that they eat. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, my rabbit does that. Yeah, that's why they do it. It's completely normal. Don't worry about it. Um, and there's also animals that eat their mum's poo, which is really, really gross. <laughs> So um, animals like uh, rhinos, elephants, and uh, koalas are really famous for it as well, will eat their mum's poo. Because when they're born and they're so young, they don't have the bacteria in their tummy already to break down um, things like eucalyptus and grasses that they eat. So they'll eat their mum's poo to get that bacteria in their gut. So when they eat their leaves, they can break it down better in their gut. So they'll eat their mum's poo. So kids, next time your mum's trying to make you eat vegetables, just think. At least she's not making you eat her poo. So look on the bright side of it. Eat your vegetables, don't eat your mum's poo. <laughs> that one's your favourite. That was Parker's favourite. <laughs> I'm glad you liked that one. Our oh, lovely capybaras. Yeah, yeah, everyone's talking about the rabbits now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so chewing the curd. Yes, yeah, so some animals, um, like uh, giraffes and cows and sheep, they will um, chew the grass, swallow it, and then basically bring it back up again and chew it again as they go down. Capybaras and rabbits do the same thing, but the opposite. They'll poo it out at the other end and then eat it. So yeah, it's instead of chewing the curd. Oh, Rachel, thank you for the stars. 25 stars for Rachel. Loving the poo info. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Victoria. Does it smell? Uh, the capybara smell doesn't. The capybara doesn't smell uh, bad at all. No, the ostrich one and the um, the otter one smell. But again, still is not as bad as the tiger from last week. <laughs> oh, hi, Emily. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, thank you, Connor. <laughs> Everyone's saying, yeah, that's gross, it is gross. Hi, Antonia. It is the circle of life, <laughs> the circle of life, it is, eating their own poo, pooing it back out again. <laughs> oh, so, oh, actually, I, I, I didn't mention this last week, a few people mentioned it in the comments last week, and a few people have just mentioned it then, asking, um, can we see the skull in the background? Uh, what this skull is. This is a, a rhino skull. So that's what that is. People are like, what's that skull in the background? <laughs> I did say to myself, I'll have to mention it this week. This is a rhino skull. Huge. Not a real one, but a replica of a rhino skull. Hi, Lily and Sebastian. Xander is enjoying the poo facts. It's great. <laughs> Hi, Oliver. That's for a shout out. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for uh, liking and commenting and following us. I'm glad you enjoyed last week's video. Again, if you've not seen it, go back and give that a watch. And I'm really glad that you've all enjoyed this one as well. Rachel sent 100 stars. Thank you very much. We really do appreciate all the support that you've all given us during this time as well. It's been really lovely to see. <laughs> the hippos smell really bad, someone else. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, guys, so thank you very much. I think we'll leave it there. Um, 
I will continue reading the comments though because I do find the questions really interesting. Um, so thank you very much. Continue to comment if you do have any questions um, and I'll try and get to them uh, as we go. But thank you very much everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.